everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations, and today we're going to talk about when card making goes awry. Sometimes you try a new product or you try a new technique and nothing seems to work. Well, things like that happen to me all the time, so I thought I would show you how I got through each one of those challenges and still ended up with this beautiful Southwestern Sunflower card. So get ready to giggle with me as I make each one of the mistakes while creating this card. We're going to start by cutting a piece of white daisy cardstock at four and a quarter inches wide by 10 inches high. Once we've cut that piece of cardstock, we're going to score it at 5.5 inches or five and a half inches on the 10 inch side. Now we're going to fold on the score line, run the bone folder right on that fold for a nice crisp edge, and now we have a card base. We're going to set this aside and work on the stencil portion of the card. I've cut a piece of white daisy cardstock a little bit larger than I'm going to need, and I'm going to run my anti-static pouch on it to prevent any excess powder from sticking after I add the Versamark ink. I've laid the lace stencil down onto my cardstock and I'm just pressing the Versamark ink over the stencil. I'm going to go over the stencil a couple of times just to make sure I have a very good thick coverage of ink. After I carefully lift up the stencil, you're going to see a slight color variation where that Versamark ink is. Now I'm going to shake up that tinsel embossing powder and then sprinkle it there on my cardstock. I'm going to make sure that this entire image has a good thick layer of embossing powder before I heat set it with the heat tool. Now remember how I told you this project seemed to have problems right from the start? This was one of the first mistakes I made. Normally when I spill embossing powder like this, I go and grab a wet paper towel to clean it up, but for some reason I decided to brush it down onto the floor and I did not check to see where the dog was sitting and she ended up coated with copper embossing powder. So you can only imagine both of our faces as I had to go and clean the dog up, get all the copper embossing powder off of her, and I grabbed a wet paper towel, cleaned up my surface, and then I came back to heat set this stencil image with this heat tool. As the heat tool heats the embossing powder, you can see that it gets that beautiful copper color. Tinsel embossing powder has a bit of a texture to it, so it looks a little bit rough and a little bit vintage as it's heating. I just love the look of the copper, and I thought that it would look great against that blue ink I plan on using here in a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and run my heat tool behind this paper, making sure all of that powder is heat set. And then we're just going to move on to the next part of the project. I'm going to be using a Distress Oxide ink in a peacock feather color. The embossing powder is going to resist this ink. So as I apply it with my blending tool, the embossing powder is going to appear like it's becoming dull and losing its shine. But in fact, we're going to be able to wipe all of that ink off here in a minute and we'll bring back the sheen of the copper. This copper and teal combination is a new one for me, but it's something that I'm finding is popular this fall. It's kind of a reflection of some of the 70s decor that used to be out there, and I just thought it would be a fun one to try with sunflowers. Once all the color had been added, I needed to remove the color from that copper embossing powder to bring back the shine. Now, unfortunately, I started out with a Kleenex and the roughness of the copper tinsel started to tear apart that Kleenex. So I reached over, grabbed a paper towel and started wiping it down. Here's where I made my second error. The paper towel that I grabbed was the paper towel I had used to clean up the embossing powder spill. So now not only am I getting powder all over that background, I am removing ink because that ink reacts with water. So I just decided to clean up my mess with the wet paper towel and then take a look at the damage that I had caused. As you can see, the color's not as bright as I would like it, and it looks like I've removed and damaged some of the embossing powder. It's also warping a bit because it's quite wet. So I decided to go ahead and grab my heat tool and try to dry it. 
Now I also realized at this point I needed to be very careful drying it because I didn't want to overheat the already set embossing powder. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go grab some stamping blocks. I'm just going to lay them down as a weight and set this aside and work on a different part of the project. I've chosen to use the With a Thankful Heart Stamp and Thin Cut set because I wanted to add some yellow sunflowers. Now I'm going to be cutting out quite a few of these images, so I decided to cheat a little bit here and place all of the images on one block and then stamp them all at once. I'm using pigment ink here in Espresso, which I'm going to heat set with clear embossing powder. Once the images were stamped, I just sprinkled them with the clear embossing powder and off camera, I heat set them with the heat tool. So you can see here, they are all ready to cut out using these matching thin cuts. I will warn you that the sunflower dye takes a little bit of time and finagling to figure out where exactly it goes on the flower. My plan for the future is to put a little mark on the stamp and the sunflower so I can match up the appropriate petals. But as you can see, I did figure it out and then I just used a little bit of post-it tape to hold all of those dies in place. Again, I am cheating a little bit here, but I'm making three sets of these. So I wanted to be able to make the cutting process go a lot quicker. Here I'm just running all the dies through my cutting machine all at once. And now I have one set of images ready to go to place onto the card. By now, the stenciled portion of my card is dry. So I have cut it up into two pieces to place on my card base. Before I do that, I do want to add a little bit of splatter to the front of these pieces. So I've grabbed a toffee shimmer brush and I'm just adding drops of shimmer. Now, I did another silly thing here. I didn't even think that the shimmer would not dry on that embossing powder. So I went to go pick it up and I ended up with shimmer all over my hands. So I had to grab another paper towel, this time a dry one, and dab up a little bit of that shimmer. So it didn't give me as dark of a toffee color as I would have wanted, but it still gave me that antique spotted look. Now that I have all of the parts and pieces ready for my card, I can start assembling it. I'm going to start out with a piece of ribbon in a cream color and adhere this to the base of that larger stenciled paper. I'm just going to wrap the ribbon around to the back and then I'm going to adhere it to that top flap on the card base. The one inch stenciled strip gets adhered to the inside of the card. So when you open it up, you're going to see this little bit of a border at the base. When the card is closed, you can see that there's just a little bit of a white space in between the two stenciled portions with the ribbon as a divider. Now, my original intentions were to watercolor all of these images. That is why I heat embossed them. It's much easier to watercolor with heat embossing. But as I started to place all of the images down, I wasn't quite sure if adding more color was a good idea. So I just kind of started playing with the different espresso pieces, trying to form some different layers. Now, of course, I did change my mind and decided that I needed a little bit of color on the front of the card. And instead of yellow sunflowers, I decided to do red. My favorite color combination is teal and red. If you've ever been in my scrapbook room, you're going to see those colors. So here I've just grabbed some cinnamon ink and a water brush, and I'm just adding color to two of the sunflowers. I've gone and done a light water wash first, and then I'm going in with a little bit more intense color to add some shading and shadows. The raised heat embossing keeps the color inside each one of the little petals and prevents it from getting all muddled together. I decided that the front sunflower needed to be a little bit more of a bright red. So I grabbed a scarlet ink and I'm using the ink pad here as my palette with the water brush again to add color to the front of the sunflower. I've done a light wash in the background and then a more intense color to deepen the shadows and give it more definition on some of the petals. 
At this point I was taking a look at all three flowers together and I felt like the front flower might not stand out as well as I had hoped against the other two. So I grabbed some Sundance ink and really watered it down so that I could add a nice yellow wash on the front of the flower. And this gives me a beautiful fiery sunflower. I'm going to start assembling all of those layers once again. I'm so glad I added color to those sunflowers. Now they really pop off the front of that card. I'm still debating whether or not I want to add color to the other images, but I think I like the look of the espresso against the color on the sunflowers. It just makes those flowers really pop against that peacock and copper background. Off to the side, I have some thin and thick 3D foam tape and dots. The different thicknesses of tape allow me to add multiple levels of layers on the front of the card. And as you can see, it went together really quickly with all of those leaves and pieces of wheat and those tiny little acorns. All the images on here were just so much fun to play with. I didn't use all of the images that I stamped and cut out, but it was nice to have all of them laying there so that I could figure out which ones looked best on the front of the card. Looking at the card, I felt like the background needed a little bit more depth, and this is where I made another mistake. Distress oxide inks don't work like our dye inks. You cannot just rub them against the sides. You need to use a blending tool. By running this ink pad on the side of the card, I just ended up leaving blobs of wet ink, which I end up touching all through the rest of the video and leaving ink all over the place. At this point, I haven't discovered my error. I have started cutting out the sentiment. So I've used these thank you thin cuts. They are two layers. One is a shadow layer, which I've cut out of vellum. The other one has been cut out of craft cardstock. And here I just realized I've got ink all over my hands and I can't figure out where it's coming from, but I just kind of wipe it off and move on. I glued down that little craft colored tee and as I sat it down onto the vellum, I realized there was a big blob of blue on it and I couldn't figure out where it came from, but I discovered that I didn't like the craft color anyway. So I ended up recutting thanks out of espresso cardstock. Now, as I started to assemble this sentiment, I kept finding blobs of blue ink and I kept getting so frustrated because as you can see here, I keep trying to wash it off the vellum and I can't figure out where it's coming from. Now, every time I touch the card or move something, I end up getting ink on my hands and then I end up getting it on the vellum. And again, I have to wipe it off the vellum and I just cannot figure out where the heck is all of this blue ink coming from. But I just keep laying down all the bits and pieces. I get this sentiment all assembled and as I lay it on the top of the card, I realize where all that ink is coming from. It's all along the edges in blobs. So I pick up the card, grab some paper towel, and wipe off the excess ink. After washing my hands, I grab some 3D foam tape. I cut it into some thin strips, which I apply onto the back of the sentiment. And then after removing the backing from the foam tape, I place that sentiment at the top of the card. I took a step back and realized that I felt like there wasn't enough color on the card. After adding that sentiment, there seemed to be a heavy dose of espresso. So I grabbed my Sundance ink and I started adding color to the wheat and the leaves. Now, I should have gone with my gut, added color to all of the images before I placed them down, but instead I'm adding it after the fact. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done this too, and I don't feel bad admitting that this happens to me all the time. Once everything had dried, I went and grabbed some Bitty Sparkles and just added a couple of them around the images. And now this card is finally complete, even after all of the mistakes I made. Despite each one of those errors, this card still turned out wonderful with the turquoise and all of those fall colors. I just love all of those little stamped images and how well they all go together with that thank you sentiment at the top. 
like I said, this video was to show you that sometimes we all have bad card making days. And even when we have those bad days, we can still bring beauty from the ashes. I want to thank you for joining me today as we created this Southwestern Sunflower card. I hope that you learned a couple of new techniques and you plan on trying them on some of your upcoming projects. New projects are added every week to my blog and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed today's card and wish to see more in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification icon so that you're notified when new videos are added. If you wish to see more of the projects like this one, you can click on the collection icon above. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.